the most volcanically active world in our entire solar system, the most ferocious satellite known to us, and the dreaded entrance to a blazing inferno. All of these labels refer to Io, the Galilean moon that orbits closer to Jupiter than any of its other famous siblings. Hello everyone! How exactly have we investigated Io, and what discoveries have we managed to uncover about this extraordinary moon? And furthermore, what specialized equipment allowed us to successfully photograph it in remarkable detail? Everyone, welcome to our channel! Today, I'd love to share all of that fascinating information with you. Let's get started! The Closest and Most Intense Io was first spotted in 1610 by the legendary Galileo Galilei, alongside Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, all of which were later collectively named the Galilean moons. Interestingly enough, the name Io was not coined by Galileo himself, but by the renowned astronomer Simon Marius, who was his contemporary. Working in collaboration with the equally famous astronomer Johann Kepler, Marius suggested naming these newly discovered satellites of the fifth planet after figures from Greek mythology who were beloved by Zeus. In the ensuing centuries, researchers struggled to uncover any fresh details regarding Io, effectively leaving its secrets in the dark. Back then, the crude telescopes available simply did not have the capabilities to reveal much more. Meaningful observation of Io, the innermost Galilean satellite orbiting Jupiter, finally kicked off at the dawn of the 20th century, at the very boundary between the 1800s and 1900s. Scientists determined that Io has a radius of about 1,124 miles, making it marginally larger than Europa, yet significantly smaller than both Callisto and Ganymede. Furthermore, Io's total surface area measures about 16 million square miles, roughly matching the combined extent of both North and South America. Because Io never ventures more than about 263,000 miles from Jupiter, it always keeps the same face turned toward the gas giant and completes a full orbit around Jupiter in 42 hours and 28 minutes. The duration of its own rotation is identical, maintaining perfect synchronicity with its orbit. Although Io is the closest among the Galilean satellites to Jupiter, it is not the closest of all of Jupiter's numerous moons. As early as 1892, scientists discovered a moon named Amalthea, which orbits Jupiter even closer than Io does. It is currently known that there are at least four bodies orbiting Jupiter at an even closer distance than Io. Besides Amalthea, three of these are Métis, Adrastea, and Thebe, all discovered in 1979 by Voyager 1. By the mid-20th century, scientists were already pointing out the high likelihood that Io might harbor extremely intense volcanic activity. However, there was no direct way to confirm whether this hypothesis was truly accurate. Yet, from the individual phenomena astronomers observed, this explanation was the only one that made any coherent sense. For instance, while many Galilean moons contain abundant water ice, no such presence is found on Io at all. Instead, Io is packed with enormous quantities of sulfur and sodium chloride, making it quite unique. It's almost certain that these deposits are byproducts of widespread volcanic eruptions. Additionally, Io stands out as a satellite marked by dramatic modeled patterns that are striking to behold. There is a noticeable contrast between its reddish-brown polar regions and the yellowish hues near its equator. This led some astronomers to speculate, though erroneously, that Io might not exist as a single moon at all, but rather as two separate satellites with distinctly different colors. In truth, it appears that different regions of Io experience varying types of volcanic activity, contributing to its patchwork appearance. The primary trigger behind these volatile processes is Jupiter itself. Jupiter's immensely powerful gravitational pull exerts tremendous influence deep within Io's interior. Moreover, because Jupiter perpetually looms over Io's equatorial region, that area experiences the greatest gravitational stress. Pioneer and Other Spacecrafts Surprisingly, the very first images capturing details of Io's surface were obtained at a relatively early stage. In the early 1970s, NASA's famed Pioneer spacecraft managed to snap successful photos of Io for the first time. 
On December 3, 1973, Pioneer 10 flew close to Io during its historic journey. However, the images captured by that probe were not especially useful for in-depth analysis. It was also discovered that Io, the first Galilean satellite of Jupiter, generates extremely potent radiation, similar to what is found on Europa, the second Galilean moon. The reason behind this is that our solar system's fifth planet possesses an extraordinarily powerful magnetic field. If a human were to venture there in a normal spacesuit without specialized protective measures, they would swiftly succumb to acute radiation sickness. In fact, the poor quality of these initial images is largely attributed to serious malfunctions in the onboard equipment caused by intense radiation. Exactly one year later, on December 2, 1974, Pioneer 11 finally reached Io. Fortunately, by that time scientists were well aware of the hazardous radiation, and they had established more robust protective measures. As a result, at least the polar regions of Io could be photographed in comparatively high resolution. Additionally, the images revealed that Io has an extremely thin layer of what we might call an atmosphere. Io's atmosphere cannot be considered fully developed or robust. For that reason, scientists often refer to it simply as a trace atmosphere. Nevertheless, there was indeed some semblance of an atmosphere present. Astronomers regarded this as yet another piece of evidence pointing to volcanic activity on Io. This incomplete atmosphere is formed by volcanoes expelling gas and dust directly into space. The spacecraft that directly confirmed the presence of volcanoes on Io was the next visitor to investigate this moon, Voyager. Voyager 1 flew past Io on March 5, 1979, gathering critical observations as it went. In the images captured by Voyager, brand new surface formations were plainly visible. Almost no impact craters were observed. Instead, volcanic craters dominated the landscape. Additionally, scientists noted at least nine plumes of volcanic ejecta rising from Io's surface. These features could only be interpreted as definitive signs of active eruptions. Though Voyager 2 passed Io at a relatively greater distance, it still managed to capture several fascinating images. Within those photos, one can clearly see that the Moon's surface features are actively shifting and transforming. It was determined that out of the nine previously identified volcanoes, seven remained active even then. The next spacecraft to arrive at Io at close range was Galileo. This occurred in the mid-1990s. Thanks to Galileo, we were able to verify the existence of mountains, sulfuric lakes, fault lines, and even rivers on Io's surface. Furthermore, missions such as Juno and New Horizons also contributed to the ongoing examination of Io. Currently, Io is considered one of the most extensively studied satellites in our solar system, on par with Earth's moon and Saturn's satellite Titan. There are even proposals to make Io a top-priority exploration target, though it may be quite some time before such ambitious projects become reality. What have we learned? The single most striking revelation from all of our investigations is that Io is an astoundingly active celestial body. Naturally, this is primarily due to Jupiter's extremely powerful gravitational influence. The fifth planet, Jupiter, doesn't just stir Io's interior but practically flips it inside out, constantly unleashing searing streams of molten sulfur onto the surface. So then, why didn't the moons orbiting even closer to Jupiter transform into volcanic infernos of their own? The answer is straightforward. Those other satellites are simply too small. The smaller a celestial body is, the more difficult it becomes for its interior to differentiate, and the faster it cools off. Put simply, these moons, including Amalthea, lack a true mantle and have no capacity for volcanic eruptions, making them little more than homogeneous rocks in space. Io, on the other hand, is surrounded by clouds of volcanic byproducts, including sulfur, potassium, sodium, and oxygen. Similar plumes, composed of these elements, trail behind Io along its orbital path like a ghostly veil. More precisely, these emissions form an almost uniform donut shape, through which Io continues its orbit. Because Io cannot sustain a full-fledged atmosphere, Jupiter is constantly stealing material from its surface and surroundings. The amount siphoned off can reach about 2,200 pounds per second. 
This stolen material also plays a part in the formation of Jupiter's intense radiation belts within its magnetosphere. And with that, we'll be wrapping up this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Let's take a brief moment to recap the key points we've covered. Io, much like other large bodies in our solar system, formed around 4.5 billion years ago. Yet when you consider just how violent Io is, it's almost astonishing that it has endured for so long. Why hasn't Io effectively evaporated or broken apart into fragments? Perhaps, for the time being, the rate of material loss has not been that substantial, and it may have been even less in the distant past. Even so, there is a very real possibility that over the next few billion years, Io could still face that fate. Who knows, maybe some future descendants of ours, possibly coming from another galaxy altogether, will make a video on that very topic and discuss it here on this channel. Please remember to subscribe to our channel and give us a like. Also, don't forget to share this video with your friends on social media, ensuring we all stay connected across the galaxies in the future. With that said, we'll be parting ways for a short while. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.